Uh, ladies and gentlemen, to talk about branding and how to elevate yourself, we're going to speak to Alternative Machines Entertainment founder, Valentine Pathele. Mm-hmm. Round of applause. Do you know my talk? I'm good, man. You? <laughs> easy, easy, bro. Thank you so much for coming through, man. Thanks, man, for the invite. Yeah, like, me, me and you, we always just bump into each other at parties. It's always a good vibe. Now we have to be serious. This is weird for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, dog, uh, we, we, we all know you as an events. Um, I don't know if it's coordination because one minute you're doing this, then it's that, yeah, and then yeah. you're managing brands, managing talent. So maybe just give us an introduction on who Valentine Patele is and um, uh, alternative uh, machine. Let's talk about those okay. two. You know, like any other person who works in the background, I'm a failed artist. Oh, okay. You know, started right. DJing, right. didn't work, I didn't have enough talent, <laughs> I wasn't cool enough, <laughs> didn't dress well enough, mm. you know. But yeah, man, I think from a young age, I've always loved music. Yeah. And unfortunately, as a black individual in South Africa, you never really get guidance. So I loved music, but I didn't know where I fit in, you know, into the system. Mm. So growing up, I wanted to be a DJ, obviously produced and all those things. But I realized it's not what I wanted to do. So uh, right in about 2016, I dropped out of a uh, uh, diploma I was doing. And I went back home and I told my parents that, listen, man, I want to do this music thing. And I want to figure out, you know, what I want to do. Then I went to ASE, you know, Academy of Sound Engineering. Mm-hmm. I was like, I feel like being in the sound industry will give me access to a lot of people. So that was mm-hmm. my plan that I'll meet managers, I'll meet artists, I'll meet promoters. Because events are the best way to meet the whole entire ecosystem. Mm-hmm. You know, so I went there, I studied. Then, you know, um, for a month, I rode, managed Nadia Nakai um, and... Uh, Tilly's company and Casper. Um, then I started meeting other artists, you know. So, in in short, you know, I started doing events in 2011, 2012. Our first event was Project XX. Um, didn't know anything. Didn't know you have to get permits. Didn't mm. know anything. It was just a group of boys who wanted to do a welcome home party for people who had went to varsity. So it started off as just 20 people doing a house party. We ended up having a thousand five people there. So we took it to a lodge and all that. So it became a big party. I'm like, okay, cool. It seems like events are something interesting, something I can go Mm. into. So that's how I started having my eventing background 10 years ago. And now I do stage management. I curate for events. I manage events, you know, I help from concepts, creating direction, the feel, the look, experience from when people walk in. Mm. Yes, so that's, I do everything in events essentially, you know, I can help you organize your event from, you don't know what you want to do, but you have the money, Mm. you know, from finding a venue, finding a supplier, uh, booking your lineup, getting you the right documents for you to have an event and all that. Then on the talent side, while doing sound, I actually met um, Ryan Megatroid, who at the time I was managing a friend of mine who said, bro, you do understand the business. Maybe you should become a manager. Mm. That time I was producing, I was like, oh, I don't know, management, let me see. Yeah. But, you know, because I also don't like being in front of people, it was a good idea, you know. Then that's how I met Ryan doing sound. Um, he actually thought I was kicking him off stage. Um, and I was like, no, bro, I'm actually a huge fan of yours. And we had a conversation. And I told him that, you know, I produce music. I wanted to come to one of your sessions, but I didn't have the money. He's like, mm-hmm. nah, man, come to my studio. Yeah. Um, let's just hang. You know, so Ryan Magatred is crazy white boy for those who don't know Ryan Magatred. Oh, thank you, know, you for clearing that up. A legend okay. at Soul Candy, you know, nice. a legend in Boston. He's the guy who does the music theory for the school. So I met him on Saturday. I texted him on Monday. Hey, bro, Valentine. We met on Saturday. Yada, yada, yada. And he calls me. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, man, nothing. I'm just at that flat. I'm doing nothing. Um, I can come through, you know. Then I went through to his studio. 
that very same Monday, he asked me a very important question. What do you want to do? Mm. And it was the first time somebody actually asked me that question with intention. And I told him, I think I want to do events and management. I think that's my passion. That's how I became his booking manager. That's how I started writing his label. From that, you know, I met Kyanda Soul, I met Zex Bantuni, I met Sanao Musaki. That's how I ended up working with all these big artists, essentially, and nice. doing their bookings, managing them and all that. Mm. You know, Atmos Blacks, Frigida Madillo, yeah, the list mm. is quite long. Jeez, man. Nice. You just mentioned some artists that are doing wonders in terms of their music. Their social media presence is on par, yeah. you know. Um, everything is together in terms of their brand. I just need like a little crash course. I'm a new DJ. I want to start branding myself. What are the first few items I need to look at? To look at. I mean, first of all, you need to ask yourself, where do you fit in the ecosystem? Mm. Are you an ama piano DJ? Are you a house DJ? Are you a vocalist? Mm. You need to do the research and say, cool. If I'm a vocalist, how do I need to present myself? Yeah. So that people can look at me and say, ah, oh, this guy's cool. This guy can sing. Then you start with the basics, you know. You need to make sure you have a photographer. You know, you are taking... If you don't have a photographer, your friend with an iPhone, a Samsung, something that's, mm. you know, something modern. Yeah. You know, so that they can take you your pictures so you can post. I mean... First of all, as a fan, a promoter, a brand, if I don't know you and somebody recommends me to you, I'm mm. going to look at your social media first because I don't know who you are as a person and what you do. Mm. If your social media looks clean, I can understand that, okay, cool, there is something here. Then you start curating. You're like, cool, if I have gigs, I need to post my gigs in a nice way. If I have a bit of a personality, I need that personality to show in my in my posts. So for some people, it's different. There's, like me, for example, I only post work stuff most of the time on my feed mm. because I understand that my business is working events, is working with other artists. Mm. So I want it easy for somebody to come to my page and they'll see that, okay, this guy might work with these people. This is what he does. Mm. So you need to ask yourself that, cool, because now I'm an Ama Piano DJ, how do they dress? You know, how do they speak? Mm. Perfect example is like a Tulani way. Mm. You know, how are you? It's a simple thing, you know. Because of that, more people just know him. Mm. You know, he has taken the personality of being the guy who causes ruckus, the guy who's just very loud, your presence, you feel him. When he gets to an event, he's greeting everybody. Mm. You know, that's something he has done. So it's it's you understanding the type of person and the type of brand you want to be. But social media is the first place just having dope content just having a clean image just consistently posting and updating people who are interested in your brand on your progress mm. Mm. all right i've got you man you know uh we went straight into how to create a brand but just something i also didn't get clarity on and i think i still might not understand is what exactly is a brand like if i'm gonna say i'm a brand what does that mean and how am i carrying myself I mean, a brand, oof. a brand is a product, mm. you know, and hence I'm saying there is a demand for something anywhere. So your brand and your purpose is to align with that demand. Mm. So it's like if you're selling hot dogs and I can see you don't have sauce, I'm going to say, my brother, I have tomato sauce for you. Mm. Here's my brand mm. because I can see the demand. People are eating the hot dog there. They're choking. They're like, hey, it's dry. Well, when I'm bringing you the tomato sauce mm. because I understand the demand. So a brand is something that puts itself and aligns itself with the demand of a consumer or a client. Mm. For instance, if, as my brother is saying just more, YFM is looking for a certain demographic. So you need to understand what YFM's mission is and vision for you to align with it. 
So if you know you're an ama piano DJ, you can either dress like, for instance, there's good is nice video mm. where people are dressing old or whatever, or you can dress young and hip. Where well, YFM can look at your page and say, this guy aligns with what we're doing, mm. and that's how you get to the platform. So a brand is you realizing what you want to do, but it's the other fifty percent of aligning with consumer demand mm. which now puts value in what you're doing okay i want to also ask something né? you you keep you refer a lot to amapiano it's the biggest brand right now it's the biggest brand right now i want is there a gap or something that we're missing in terms of branding as house music artists and djs and and not necessarily i think the reality is some so I always say this the reality of things is that not everyone is gonna be as big, not every genre is gonna be as big. House music, which is actually where Ama Piano comes from, because Ama Piano became very soulful. There were people who took the normal house music and played piano heavily on it. You know. Mm. So what has happened now is that because of TikTok and lockdown and you know the conversation of radio tiktok was bigger i'm a piano came with a lifestyle and dancing mm. you know dance is a global language so tiktok being a platform that encourages people to dance and do challenges felt perfectly with i'm a piano everybody was at home so everybody was on their phones so afro tech and house is not about theatrics not about dancing and so it's very difficult for it to garner support of someone who's in china and just wants to dance mm. you know so there's different metrics you know of how a genre can become big perfect example is africans music in south africa there's few people who speak africans compared to zulu that's why i think it's because fm has like 11 million mm. uh, monthly listeners so an African station and a Zulu station kind of have the same reach. So that's why you start realizing that, okay, cool. Because of this metrics, that's why Ama Piano is very huge and House is very, you know, small compared to Ama Piano. Mm. But in the same light, we are seeing very young DJs like Anmos Black do European tours while they're still young, which never happened in House. Mm. Because the music we're now producing in house is very European, is very centered on Ibiza and those things. So it's become acceptable, and that's why it's growing far more, much more bigger in the white community than the black community. Ama piano is not really moving in the white community overseas, the way Afrotech is, but it's bigger. Mm. You know, because now we have more South African people overseas. We have more Nigerian people overseas. So if you can look at most of these parties that are being organized, you find out it's black people that are actually going to this Uncle Waffles tours, Deben Gogo and the likes. Mm. Mm. Yo, yo, very interesting stuff, man. Very interesting stuff. On a brand, on a brand level, no? you've gone to how many countries just this year? A lot. You can't count. Yeah. My point exactly. <laughs> Damn. So, is there something apart from the music that a promoter that side looks at, like you said, with your social media page? And what is it maybe that a person like that trying to book this side might look at? Yeah, I mean, like, first of all, the first thing they look at is if you're popping, mm. what type of shows you play. So, that's why it's very important to capture your big shows. You know, a uh, perfect example, there's a booking um, working on for a client in Mozambique. I went to a artist. I said, hey, man, I have 15K US dollars, flights, everything, which is around about 300,000. I said, there's this show um, in Mozambique. It's for ex-client. Are you willing to take it? And the manager said, bro, it doesn't align with what we want to do. Mm. because it's the 15th, it's the 16th of December. We want big shows. We want to play for 2,000, 5,000 people because we want to capture that. Mm. So you start realizing it's not just a money game. 
you need to capture your big shows and sometimes they don't happen all the time so that's why sometimes big acts don't take money they look they say okay which party is it that's gonna look good i'm gonna mm -hmm. hire a content creator we're gonna make an amazing video that's gonna funnel more shows so at, at the current stage you know you you need to be popping but also um outside of like capturing your 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 shows the music needs to align to a specific brand. So if you watch, most of the high energy DJs get booked in Ama Piano mm. because the culture of Ama Piano, you know, it's very mm. dramatic, it's very energetic. Time, yeah. And private school piano is not touring that much mm. because it's more chill and people don't yet get it. So that's why you start realizing that, you know, even if it's Ama Piano, it doesn't work everywhere. The reason why your lock drums work is because EDM, your drum and bass and all that mm. have been around. A drum is a drum, no matter how you program it. So people are very familiar with the drums mm. and whatever. Mm. So it helps, you know, if your music is aligned with a lock drum because people easily accept it globally. Ah, I see, I see. So as you, you manage a lot of talent, um, as you've said, what is it that you look at before you say, I'm taking this brand and I'm elevating it? What must the brand be already doing for themselves? For themselves. I mean, first of all, talent, you know. And I look for great talent. A lot of people are talented. Not a lot of people are great. Mm. And it's because if somebody's just talented, there's no assurity that mm. they're going to make it. It's just not enough. But if somebody's great, or you can hear the music, you are like, mm. you can't deny it. You know, you mm. listen to it, you play it every day, you think about them every day. Like, I need to be obsessed with you. And that's why my general rule is that I only play music of artists I, I work with on, on my phone. Or when, like, I don't download anyone else's music. It's mm. just the, the talent I work with. Because I need to be motivated to push you. Then I need to look that is your sound commercial. Because mm. I have bills. I have bills, my brother. I want a V-class. I want a g -Wagon. Yes. So if you're not going to make me get closer to my dream also, mm. I can't work with you. Of course. Because I have to put my time. And what people don't realize is that as a manager, I invest in structure. Mm. Sometimes people book you because I just say, this is my guy. You get on a lineup. Sometimes radio just listens because I'm like, this is my guy. Mm. And I need to keep that standard. You know, so if you come with a Kayenda, you come with an Atmos, a Sanel, a Msaki, you get, you get what I'm saying? Like, every, the I can't come with an AG. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I'm sorry, think. but that's just the reality of it, mm. you know, because the honest truth is you get to a certain point where things aren't valuable mm. to you anymore. Mm. And that's why the brand needs to be cooking. It needs to be making money. You know, I was telling this to somebody earlier on. I was like, if I start working with you today, by next week, I must be making money. Mm. by next yeah. week yeah by next week okay because it's it's really that simple when like these artists i just started working with i made money same time mm. because it's just that easy the the brand is there the gig might be next year but the deposit is coming in this week mm. you know what i'm saying mm. so if your brand can't allow me to make money at this moment while i am in my permanent life it's very difficult for me to work with you. And it's going to be very difficult for you to work with other managers. Because as I've said, artists and talent only think that managers are there to help other people. But we're there to help ourselves also. You know, so I think if you want to approach a manager, have a product that's hot, mm. make money, and you have to be great. You have to be better than your friends. You just making music with your friends in the room and they're telling you you are hot. It's not going to work. Mm. 
Mm. You know, if you're making a piano, your level should be Kabza, should be Stoke, you should be Calvin Mom. Mm. You should be competing with the best um, already before you even, you know, just release. You need to ask yourself, like, where do I want to be? And do I have the talent to take me there? Okay. So similarly, as a talent manager, similarly to like what radio would be, you need something that's already moving. You need someone that's already doing something for themselves. All right. Um, there's one thing I want to figure out. No? I, I believe talent. I believe in talent, you know. Um, what's more important? Because you are looking for talent and Mo is looking for a brand. I mean, it's the same thing. Mm. It's the same thing. You cannot have a brand without talent and you need a talent with a brand. Mm. It's one and the same thing. You know, it's, it's, if you think about it, how many producers do you know who are dope but aren't getting bookings? It's because the brand isn't there. Mm. How many people have the brand but they aren't getting bookings? It's because the talent isn't there. Okay. There's people, million Instagram followers, but everyone is like, ah, this mm. guy can't play. We all know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you see, yeah. they go hand in hand. I've got you, man. All right, man. Uh, common mistakes people make when they brand themselves out there. What What do you pick up a lot on some, if you just change this about yourself, I would actually take you on. I think listening listening to your team listening to consumers the biggest common mistake is that artists believe they make music for themselves mm. and they don't care where it goes it's like my brother um what do you mean do you make music for yourself mm. you don't mm. nobody says i'm making a beat and i'm gonna play it for myself if you're making music make it for the consumer mm. so the biggest mistake is people focus on themselves so much and they eat up their own do, 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 mm. you know mm. and it's like my man nobody cares you yeah. know we have Kabza we have Atmos Black we have Zakes we have Black Coffee why should I take my time when I pay Spotify 5 60 bucks a month to listen to your music if you're mm. making music that only you can listen to mm. so I think that's the, that's the biggest common mistake where people think because they're creative, they're above the system. They're above the industry. Mm. And that they don't care what people think. Because they believe in their... They believe like, yeah, like, yeah, if people don't want to listen to me, it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> Sit there. <laughs> oh, man. I've got you, man. All right, yeah. dog. Hey, because of time, this is just not enough, man. You have it's to not come enough, back on the man. show. It isn't yeah. enough. Are there any... Uh, is there anyone that has questions? Uh, with regard... Yeah, here we go. Friends, okay. uh, son of Dennis, you have my number. Man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Okay. Please put up your hands again. I'm gonna one, two. Son of Dennis, Mara. Son of uh, three. I wanna hear. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eva at the back. Then we close. All right. Talent, my man. Social media means nothing. You could be sponsoring your posts. I don't know why you have those followers. You could have had an OnlyFans account. Maybe all the people who are following you are pawn people. I don't know. So <laughs> I need to see what your talent is. You know, so numbers don't matter to me. Um, I like what you touched on. Um, I'm in a similar space. So can you just give out to the guys some of the you know, the tips as you are building a brand, what are those things that you need to have? Because some of the guys, hey, even when they send images for like posters and stuff, it's not good quality, you know? So just those things, there are EPKs and stuff. What else can you add? I mean, that question is broad, but I think like, as I've said, do the research, you know, understand what a press kit is. Look at what the other quality of people are posting. You know, I mean, the first thing to get done as an artist, just have pictures. And not pictures of you drinking, of rider, studio pictures. For if you ever have an interview, if you ever on a poster for your bio, pictures is the first thing. They go everywhere, bio, social media, your press kit. You know, if they put in your stuff on a 
radio flyer, for instance. So I think the first thing is just to get good pictures and have a good write-up of what you do. And people don't care, you're 23 years old. Throw that thing out of there. Just say, hey, I'm a... I'm a piano producer, I'm a house producer, this is the music I have, here's my Spotify, here's my thing. As Munya, I think Munya said or Jasmo, don't put in information that's irrelevant. Your age doesn't matter. You saying you're 23, what what am I gonna do? You know, it doesn't help me. What I appreciate is you saying, here's my Spotify, here's my Instagram, this is where I live. So I can get an idea. Or oh, are you in Houting? Are you in KZN? Because if I'm trying to help you, then I can plug you to the right platforms. So if your press kit and your images and all that doesn't look good, now I have to ask you questions. So give me all the information that's very relevant that you believe like this is what a person would need, you know. But pictures are the most important thing, like to have a clean brand. Next marriage. You know, the answer is music. So, for instance, a perfect example, um, A&Ring Music for Fidget Amadillo right now, the biggest issues that people thought they were European. Mm. And it's just two black guys from South Africa. So everyone gets shocked. Oh, Fidget Amadillo, aren't they white? Aren't they from Switzerland or whatever? So what we've done now is that they released a song with NAC. There's a big collaboration. We're working with Good Luck. You know, so what I've done is now, come on, man, you know me. <laughs> so I've 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 gotten them big features that will show people that they're actually local more than international. So I think they were struggling with bookings because they have songs on a million streams, like seven hundred thousand, but people always thought they were too far because of the sound they make. They make melodic house. And a lot of people don't think melodic house is produced in south africa so it's the music if you want to make music for white people you get a white act if you want to make music for Afrikaner people you get an Afrikaner vocalist it's that simple you start speaking to your demographic directly i think uh, that answer is hard work there's no way around it then i didn't work with big people in the beginning i worked hard and i had a plan a lot of people work hard, but they don't have a plan. It's like, what do you want to do? So I said, cool. I want to work with the biggest artists in the country. How do I get there? I want to work with the biggest promoters in the country. So a perfect example is that I always say a building is nothing but people. If I know the security guard and I buy them chicken licking and I know the receptionist, I buy her chicken licking. She will tell me when the CEO of the building arrives and when I should wait outside. That's a plan. You get what I'm saying? So you need to figure out how close you want to get to these people and devise a plan to get there because they don't have time for anyone, unfortunately. And it's not because they don't care, but it's because they don't care. You get what I'm saying? It's like, who are you? in the space of what I'm doing. Because I've worked hard to be San L. I've worked hard to be Zakes Bantwini. Why should I just now say, oh, cool, let me make you my media person. I don't know who you are. So you need to work to a certain point where people can recognize. To say, cool, I've met you three, four times. I've seen your work. I believe in what you're doing. The other way that you can do it as I said, I worked events because I understood I'm going to meet everyone. So a perfect example is that you want to be close to CASP. How do you do it? By knowing CASP, sound engineer, road manager, photographer, greeting them, like, so grand. Hey, last time I saw Spring Fiesta, you're good. Huh? By the fifth time, they know who you are. So when you go to CASP, Somebody else is going to be introducing you to Casper. Who holds value in Casper's life? He'll give you that two minutes. You say, oh, you're a boy of my boy. What do you have to offer? So there's multiple ways you can do this thing. You just need to have a plan. Bars. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Right, man. And then, all right. I think the first question, which a lot of brand guys get wrong is they come with the longevity chat. The first question you must ask is, my brother, how long do you want to do this music business? 
Some people want to do it for six months. Some people want to do it for three years. Some people want to do it for five. Some people want to do it forever. So I think brands always believe somebody has to be an artist for 10 years, 20 years. That's not the case. Some people actually just enjoy or want to be successful for three years going to other businesses. So I think it's asking the client, what do you want to do? You realize more than often that people are happy just having a one hit and they're done. They've made a million, they're out. They never really wanted to be a star. You get what I'm saying? So the, my advice is always to find out why people do whatever they do and where do they see themselves. Then you can answer the question of, okay, my brother, if you want to be in the business for 10 years, this is how we do it. If you just want to ride the wave, because honestly, sometimes you realize when you speak with people, they never knew they were going to be that big. They never expected to be that big. And once they get that big, they're like, I actually never had a plan. I actually never wanted to be this artist, but now I am. And I don't know if I like it because what people don't realize, fame brings other problems into your life. So you start understanding why some people don't work on their brand. They just love being underground, as we were saying, like house music. Some people love to play music, but they don't want to be famous. So I think it's about alignment. We mustn't force longevity. We mustn't force branding on everyone. It works for people who want it. Okay. I mean, the first answer is that everything depends. You know, some people don't want to go overseas. I've dealt with a lot of piano artists. No, like you, 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 and that's why I brought up an example of Mozambique earlier on, where it was offering more money, like they didn't care. So, this question is very complex. So I'm going to start with the second question about international, us going internationally, then speak about the international acts. So you need to think about it like this. Depending on the level of artist you are, your treatment won't be the same. If you're not Kanye West, you cannot add Kanye West demands. Kanye West came to South Africa. He asked that when he gets to backstage, there mustn't be anyone. It was one of the first crazy requests like that to say, from when I get off the car at the Coca-Cola Dome and I walk to my room and I walk to stage, anyone who is in my team, I don't want to see that person. But it might not, not even be Kanye West. Maybe it's his team saying, yo, we know when Kanye West comes, your helpers, your sound guys, they want to take pictures, they want to talk to him. Hey, dog, I'm your big fan. So sometimes you mitigate that as his team. It might not be him. It might be his team saying, we understand the type of artist we're working with. And these are some of the things we're going to put into a contract. A perfect example, you know, is that if Maporisa is going overseas, he's big enough. He's going to get the money. He's going to get the treatment. Because it goes back to what I was saying. If you are posting your video and you're doing 15,000 people in South Africa every weekend, me as a promoter, I already understand the level of artist you are. And that's why the branding aspect is very important. But if I'm booking you and I don't really know you, but I know your song, but I'm taking a chance, I might not give you the same respect I would have given to a well-rounded, defined artist. And that's why branding is important. Because... I'm able to demand things as your manager because I'm very confident enough comparing the other artists around. You know, because my background is of events and talent management, I know what rider is Uncle Waffles. I know what my artists are. I know where to improve. I've also booked and worked with international artists. So I'm able to learn from them also and say, oh, this is what they put in their contracts. I like this. I'm going to put this thing for my artist. So it's also about learning. You watch what other people are doing and you empower yourself and you empower your artist. Then on internationals coming to South Africa, Beyonce is Beyonce. You know, Beyonce is grossing, just to give an example, 
So there's this thing called um just forgot its name, but it's an it's a platform you pay for and it gives you information on how people are touring. So usually in America, people say, okay, cool, we've booked this person, we made three million in ticket sales, we made two million in merchandising and whatever. It's called Polestar. So Beyonce Peshaw, for an example, I think she made between six to ten million US dollars. So every time you see Beyonce performing, that's how much that day they're making. Tickets, merchandising, and whatever. Ne? So do you expect somebody who's making around about 200 million rands to get the same treatment as somebody who's charging 20,000 rands? It will never, it just doesn't make sense because the value you're giving me is not the same. And this is why you're going to treat somebody who brings you a lot of money better. That's just the nature of the game, you know? So I feel the whole comparing is unfair because brands are never on the same level. But the second thing is your team. Who is your manager? Does your manager, does your booking agent understand the role they play for you? Because if they don't understand the role, you can be a big artist but still get a bad treatment because your managers don't prep. So there's hospitality and technical riders. You know, one of mine once leaked on social media, people were making fun of it and whatever because it was from a big artist. And people were like, why would why are these people demanding these cars? That was one of the the topics. Why are they asking for escalates? Why are they this is South Africa? But I was like, you guys have a document that is made for international. And in that section, it wrote, or vehicles for international shows, Escalade, V-Class, because we know where we are touring and we know the promoters we are working with. They can afford to pay for those cars. So that's why I'm saying, well, first of all, levels are different, but your manager needs to understand what their role is. Answered. Hey, man. <laughs> that was too dope, Joe. That was too dope. All right. Um, unfortunately, we can't take any more questions. Uh, we're going to our final speaker before we have an overall masterclass. Um, thank you so much, dude. Uh, yeah, no, I saw pens and papers. <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> and good thing. Uh, I hope we really get to do this again just to unpack a little more, you know, as yeah. time goes by. But nevertheless, thank you so much. I see you are praying. Yeah, <laughs> and I hope you're still around to engage with everyone else. Yeah. All right. Thanks, man. Round of applause, guys.